So now we're at a point where you've imported your photos, selected a photo to work with, and now we can move on to editing. First thing we're going to do is select our photo and hit develop over here in the top right. This will bring up the editing panels. Over to the right is where we'll be working most. This is where all your adjustments will be. I'm going to guide you through my process and feel free to follow along. So the first thing we should look at is cropping. If we just click this button at the top here, our image will be overlaid with this box. We can click and drag this in from the corner, side to side, and up and down. Something really useful to know is that in all Adobe programs, if you press shift while cropping, it will crop it to the ratio of your image, so you don't stretch anything. You can also hold down Alt to center down your image. When you're done cropping, you can hit this button again, or you can press Done. Okay, now we're going to move down to the first panel here under Basic. This is where all our adjustments will be. For me, I always start at the top and work my way down. The best way to find out what each slider does is to just experiment. If you hover over a slider and press the up and down arrow, it will increment either up or down. The exposure slider can be really important. Usually the photo needs to be brighter than you think, as your screen is coming through as light. I would try incrementing it up, then down, doing comparisons back and forth. If you look up at the top, we have something called a histogram. A histogram tells us how much darks, lights, and color we have over the image. The left is our darks, and over to the right is our lights. Think of all these as our data in the image. If most of the data is to the left, then that means we have a lot of dark areas. The general rule is that a good image will have a diverse histogram. In the top corners of the histogram, you'll see two triangles. If we press the left one, for example, and bring down our exposure, you will start to see blue spots in our image. This means that the blue spots are so dark that no detail can be made out in them. This is the same for the other triangle, except it's when your image is so bright that it can't make out any detail. It's important to remember that sometimes it's okay for things to be too bright or too dark. If the sun's in your photo, it's going to be very bright. However, that's simply how it looks. If you fix something being too dark or bright, adjustments can be made in this area. Again. The best way to find the right adjustment is to just experiment. So from here, I would just work your way down, fiddling with the adjustments as you go. I won't talk about all of them as they can be pretty self-explanatory, but I will mention some important ones. For example, some of your images may have noise in them. Noise is when your ISO is too high, and if you zoom into your image by left-clicking, you may see some grain. To fix this, we can scroll down to Detail. under noise reduction and amp up luminance. This will reduce the noise at the cost of detail in your image. As you can see, the image tends to get much softer, so don't use it too much. You can use sharpening, however, the more you increase that, the more noise you'll get. I tend to stay away from this slider. Another way to stay away from noise is to not make your shadows brighter. The darks tend to hide the noise, and bringing those shadows up will increase the noise. Another important panel is Lens Correction, which is right under the Detail panel. I always check these two boxes. This will fix any distortion that you may have had. One other one that I use often is under Effects for Vignettes. Bringing this down will darken your edges, and bringing it up will brighten them. I wouldn't go any more than 15, but if you think it's necessary, keep going. Once I get to the bottom, I would start back up on the top under basic and adjust if necessary. Now I kind of skipped over this a little bit, so I'm gonna just go ahead and just play with the sliders. And that's really all you have to do. Just get it until it looks right. So here's a good example with the highlights. As you can see, the clouds are pretty difficult to see, and if I scan over my highlight triangle, you can see that it's red. So what I can do 
is bring down these highlights and we can start to see some of the clouds. All right, so remember not to bring up the shadows too much as that can reveal some noise. Um, it's okay to bring it up a little bit. However, I think I'm gonna bring it down just a, just a bit. Uh, the whites are gonna be your brightest highlights and the blacks are gonna be your darkest shadows. So I'm just gonna keep messing around with this. And you wanna have a good balance of whites and blacks, shadows and highlights. And for clarity, clarity is pretty much sharpening. I wouldn't go over 10. I usually like to put it at 10 and just have it be a little bit more clear. And that's all clarity does. Vibrance, I usually like to bring up vibrance and saturation. Uh, vibrance is pretty much the fine tuning of saturation, if you want to think of it like that. You can also bring it down completely if you want black and white. Over here we have more fine tuning highlights. These are great too. You can mess around with those. Now you can always go back and see what your original image looked like by hitting the uh, backslash on your keyboard. This is great for comparing. Now let's say there's only one part of the image that I want to adjust. What I can do is hit this brush tool over here and I can paint in what I want to change. I have all my adjustments right here and it will only affect the area in which I painted. I can change my brush size by pressing the brackets on my keyboard and I can erase by holding Alt. There's also some settings down here where I can change the feathering, which will make the edges softer. To go back to adjustments, I need to click the brush again to disable it. If I want to go back to it, I need to press the brush and also click this dot to get the settings I was just using. If you start painting and do not click the dot, you'll start painting a new area of paint which will have different settings. Another really useful thing is the spot removal tool. This will get rid of any small unwanted areas. This is really useful if you want to get rid of any pimples or specks of dirt. All you need to do is click over what you want to get rid of. It doesn't always work, but generally it does. So let's say I want to get rid of this. I just have to align it and click. It will go ahead and try and find another spot in your image to try and replicate it. And as you can see, again, it doesn't always work, but generally it does. Lightroom also comes with some presets if we look over to the left. You can open some and try out some if you'd like. However, I rarely use them. You can make your own preset too. To do this, once you have all your adjustments made over here, you can press the plus button right here over presets and you'll get this window. First, you can name your preset. And all these boxes are just the settings over here. You can enable or disable certain ones if you'd like. However, I would generally keep them all on except for transform and these filters. After that, you can click create and it should show up under user presets. If we look at the other images, we can actually go ahead and select that preset and it'll apply all the settings we just had on this image. Now what you could do is individually press all these images and select that preset. However, there's a better way. So if all your images are all relatively the same, what we can do is right click our edited image, go to settings, copy settings. This will bring up a familiar window where we can enable certain adjustments. I would leave local adjustments, transform, spot removal, and crop unchecked as these are very specific to each image. After that we can click copy and this will save the settings from this image. So what we can do down at our film strip is select the leftmost image, scroll over to the right, Hold down shift and click the right image. This will select everything in between. And we could click on any photo and right click, go to develop settings and go to paste settings. 
This should paste all our settings from this image across all the images. And this is really great for editing all your photos really quickly. If you had a lot of adjustments, then it would be a good idea to go through all the photos just to make sure they look right. So that's really it for editing. Make sure to play around with it and familiarize yourself with the panels.